And now we are joined by Madras Flaminas, who faces Oban Elliott at Cage Warriors 131 on December 10th. Madras, firstly, you were supposed to fight in June. You had to withdraw with an injury. Um, what kind of injury was that? And how have you found it recovering from that in the lead up to this fight? Uh, yeah, it was like I should fight the Alexi Mantequini uh, on July. And then uh, two weeks before the fight, I did my last sparring. Uh, yeah, last sparring was like last hard sparring. So I landed uh, with a big blows, big hook, and I break my, my thumb. This one. So it's still, it still can't bend it backwards like it should be, but it's all now in the full use, so I can still punch in. So um, recovery, recovery was hard because like it take me out. Basically, I didn't train for fully for one month, like didn't do nothing, you know. And and and, and, and after one month, I start put my fitness back on it. And and, and yeah, only only end of the o- August, I start lightly punch again and 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 and, yeah, and all September, October, November and start smashing bags and parts and sparring again, you know. So it's all good. Recovery is good. So how is the fun now? Do you are you still going to be doing hard sparring going into this fight or are you going to be a bit more, a bit more cautious this time with it? it? No, I still got one more sparring left uh, is next week and that's about it. But obviously you now, because I got the injury, I'm more careful when I do things because I never, I never before, before ever, I got any like breaks, something or any kind of injuries like this. So it was kind of big shock for me as well. And I didn't think I'd break it. I think it's, it's dislocated. So I was walking around about two hours till I go to hospital, you know, so I go to hospital and I find out his break and yeah, it's, it was, a, it was what it was and, 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 and yeah now now it's just basically now the old training is more because of I'm not the youngest one in the game as well you know so I start training more careful more smarter so I think it's uh, all paying off and you you yeah everybody get will see that on 10th of December you know you say you're not the youngest but you're still quite young for in terms of your career but yeah I think oh. I'm in prime now <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're definitely getting in prime. And, you know, how difficult is it pulling out of a fight with an injury at that point in your career? I'm sure, you know, it's a difficult decision to come to, but in the, in the longer term, it was the right decision. You know, obviously, I, I never pull out from the fight. That's the first thing. That was the first time in my life when I pull out from the fight. But it is like, I didn't want to pull out, but there is no another option, you know? You, you break your tomb. You can't fight with a broken tomb. So nobody's let me fight with a broken tomb. So you, it was hard. Uh, at the same time, is you can't do nothing. Is, there is the things what you can't control. And that was one of them, you know. So, but yeah, it, it's all good. And it's make, you yeah, make, like I say, it's make everything right because I got my time with my family. I get all sorted out in my head as well. It's longer break after I lo- lost to Jack Grant. So it was uh, good for my head. Uh, cleared out all my uh, head as well. So, yeah, I feel like now it's a little bit different. All the training camp was a lot different, night, uh, a lot smarter. So, yeah, it will be di- you will be see different beast on the 10th of December. Yeah, and besides <laughs> that injury and recovering from that injury, how well has your training camp gone this time? And has the kind of extra break from the last fight helped you in terms of improving yourself? Yeah, definitely. I feel feel like I uh, improve in a lot of areas. You know, obviously, I couldn't I couldn't grapple till uh, I think till September, like heavy grappling. But I feel like my grappling is improving as well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good because the training camp was awesome. It's like I used a lot. I still do the same kind of same thing. A lot of traveling. Uh, I, I spend most of the uh, most of the camp in. Uh, Nottingham in fourth dimension, uh, then in Lincoln, uh, lockdown MMA. Plus, uh, I travel to Gul to Gripper Jiu Jitsu, and then, then I travel to Hull to another new gyms. You know, so it's like it's all good. It's everything for me on, on myself. So yeah, the improvements are made, and I can't just can't just wait. I feel sharp. It's like I can't explain. It's good when you when you're feeling good. 
you perform good and that that will be shown and now looking towards your the, the your upcoming fight you know it'll, it'll be in front of fans and your last three fights um they have not there have been no spectators so how excited are you to be able to go back and fight in front of fans you can't believe how excited I'm because i think the first of the last last three fights what i did in a lockdown i i feel like i didn't perform and i feel like the the crowd was always when you watch my fights before i always bring it and i feel like something was missing and the crowds always bring me the extra boost and i think yeah it's just going to blow up on 10th of december so in terms of looking at fighting without fans and with fans do you feel like you'll miss some of the advantages in terms of hair in your corner or does that not really bother you too much no nah, that's not i still hear my corner it's just the crowd i all I always have some fans who are shouting my name. I, I always feed from uh, booze as well, you know, and somebody want me to see get knocked out and I got the extra boost to go after the guy, you know, like it's, it's different. It's a, I, I definitely feel the difference. I did, obviously, there is no regrets to fight on a lockdown uh, without the crowd, you know, it's, uh, it's, you still get fights in, but yeah, I still lost two fights, but yeah, with the crowd, you will see different Latvian Express, you will see what's, what's actually mean Latvian Express, you know. And do you think the crowd will be against you on December December 10th? Because Oban's from Wales and the fight's taking place in England. Do you think they will be on his side rather than your side? I always bring some of my fans as well, so is that that's not the big case. I, in the London, probably not going to be that much that much of my fans, but I've seen next year we're going to Liverpool, maybe Manchester, and then I'm going to fill fill the up all the seats, you know, because uh, my fans love to come, come support me, but London for them is too far. But in London, it doesn't matter. I think. Uh, uh, Wells is quite close to London as well, yeah. Uh, I don't know, really. So I hope he's gonna bring a lot of boost for me. So it will be fun. And looking at your next opponent, Oban Elliott, um, he is very much a prospect. You know, he's only had seven fights. And looking at your record, you know, you almost have, you do have double his kind of experience in the game. Do you think that is an advantage to you? And will you look to use that experience in the fight? So it's just quite good amateur career as well. So basically, I got quite good big amateur career as well. So I I count like amateur is exactly the same like pros, just is not going to your record. So I don't know experience. Maybe I think is a fun fight. Is a fun favorite fight, definitely. And I asked for the fight because uh, I saw him. I saw him after the last fight when it's KO. The Macmanus would say. Uh, uh, he say, oh, whoever going to fight me next, uh, whoever going to get offered me next, they're going to look my last fight and they're not going to take this fight and blah, blah, blah. So I think it's all, yeah, it's good. It's good. He got some hype and I think we're both going to bring it. I think he's got some good skills, uh, very dangerous skills for my for me as well, you know. And, and, and But I'm going to bring it back and I got exactly the same, same skills to make them make dangerous fight for him as well and he's just the best guy gonna win and I don't think that that much experience maybe a little bit maybe experience I don't know I got still got my cardio in my side I think he's gonna we'll see that, that is not I don't want to talk too much I'm gonna start talk about the game planning and everything but yeah it will be a good fight I think it's a fun fun favorite definitely fun, fun's fun's gonna win for this fight 100%. I know he's going to bring it and I'm going to bring it back. And that's what most important thing. And you, I've seen, you know, your Instagram post, you said about him having a big mouth. What do you make of kind of his personality as a fighter? And and does it motivate you kind of to... <laughs> it's good. It's good. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm just kind of a little bit different. It's like, I love it. I love it. It's like, He's selling the fights. It's, uh, it's not like it's not like we need selling a lot of fights, but is that that's who is who who is think who he think he is, then that can be, you know. But yeah, he's go. He's talking a lot, so that's good. I see him. I talk with him. Uh, I think on last fight when I fight Jack Grant, talk a little bit. He seems a nice guy. So he's not. He's just uh, behind the cameras. He like talks a lot. So that's all good. That's all good. That's all. All uh, that—that's the game, you know. That's the game. Somebody's talk, somebody's not, and 
we still go in the cage and we'll still try and knock each other out. So that's the main thing. Yeah, and it's likely at the weigh-ins, he'll try to exchange words with you. That's the kind of the way he, he is, tries to get into people's heads. Will that be something you would look to do to do with him is to exchange words or will you try and ignore him kind of thing? Yeah, it, it, it depends what he's doing. I'm always, I'm always uh, up for the game, you know? Like, if he, he's going to talk shit, I can talk shit, you know? Yeah. But I mean, when people is friendly, I'm friendly. It's like, it's the same. You, I same like I train in. I train with my training partners. I always say I give the people the same energy they give me, you know? If they are good to me, I'm good to them. If they're talking shit to me, I can talk shit. It's not, it's the, that's how it works, you know? Yeah, and have you seen much tape of him in terms of, um, especially like his one solo loss? And have you seen any flaws in him that you are looking to exploit? Yeah, he's got, he's, he's got, he's got loads of flaws. He's got loads of flaws and same as like, same like he got loads of flaws, he got loads of skills as well, so... Yeah, obviously we was watching his videos. We got we we got game plan. We gonna I try stick to it, and we'll see how it goes. And just looking at your career, you know, look at Matthew Bonner, who you've beaten. He's gone on to be a current middleweight champion. Does it kind of give you any kind of reassurance that you're capable of being a champion because you've beaten someone who is a champion? Yeah, I, I definitely know I can be a champion. I know I, I fight the guys that, like they say, I fight who is who, you know. I fight George Hardwick, I fight, I fight Mick Stanton, I fight uh, Matthew Bonner. I know my skills. I've been in training camps. I've been training together with UFC fighters. Is that all my fights is only in my head. When I didn't perform, it's only because something is wrong in my head. It's not because of skills. I know my skills. I know I can compete. I can train uh, with the best guys. I've been training with the best guys in the world. I've been in the camp with the camps that Chimayo is like um, smashing around with him, you know? So I, I know my skills. And when my confidence is high, there is uh, not a lot of guys who can stop me, you know? And you talk about that mental um, side. Have you been working on that at all in terms of getting that correctly so you can be the best version of yourself? Yeah, is it, yeah. Just make 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 it so my uh, obviously my men mental state in my head uh, is that it's just the confidence what you got it. And I think it's not that much about confidence. I think the last couple fights what bring my confidence down is because of no crowds. You know, it's like I can't get the extra energy. Uh, I, that's what I feel. And we'll, we will see 10th of December if that's changed or not. But I, I 100% sure is that the thing. And, 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 and I, I was um, already was on the way up. Like I say, I fight Jack Grant. He's the only lost, but still pays me off is a Matt Figler fight, you know, because that was where I wasn't there. I wasn't in my head. I, I was splitting up with my coach and everything was just rolling, like basically how it's rolled. And then and, and after that, I start get back and I Jack, Jack Grant lost. He's just on my own shoulders, but I didn't stick to the game plan. So, yeah, my 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 confidence level is pretty high. I, I'm ready to go. I can't wait 10th of December, you know. And you talked about training with Shemaev. When exactly did that happen? And what did you make of that experience fighting with someone who is, you know, at the top of the game right now? <laughs> yeah, it was good about... I, that was before the Adam Proctor fight. And I go like, I got three weeks to fight. Two weeks before I go to Sweden. Two weeks, I was uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks in a row. I was just main, basically main training partner for Kamsat. So we was training both in the morning and the evening together every day. Uh, it's just, they, they training like a beast. And I, they make me so tired. I come back and... I come back on Saturday and next next week I need to fight Adam Proctor. I sleep about three, four days. I could, couldn't get rest enough mm. because I was so tired after two weeks of training with them. So and I, and I did I did I did I did perform quite well with Adam Proctor. I think is Adam Proctor fight is only once. Uh, I what I take it like a lesson because it's proved he was better that night. Mm. Uh, and that's about it. But everybody else, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still coming for them. And, you know, we look at these names that you fought. You fought some of the best fighters to ever fight in Cage Warriors, you know. Fig Lack um, and, and Adam Proctor, for example. 
uh, what do you do you feel respected by cage warriors in a way that they're putting these kind of beasts in front of you and, and challenging you and both of them no i, I think i think yeah uh, quite i think they respect me uh, the way because like i say i never pull out from the fights if they offer me fight like matthew speak uh, like uh, his fight was on 10 days notice the or, original opponent pull out and there was totally different styles i was practicing the guy was uh yeah like i was training for totally different style like uh, at all and i know because i was training with matthew spiglock i know his style is different so i need to change something but in the 10, 10 days you can't change nothing so i still take the fight lost lost is the uh, it is what it is you can't do nothing i try my best and it didn't work out so um yeah, I, I, I think Cage Warriors is, is being all right with me and I can't say a bad word about them. So it is what it is. Give me, give me the best. Uh, to be the best, you need to be the best, you know? So that's why I'm here. I try to fight all the best guys in Cage Warriors. And if I lost some, I lost some. But if you watch the same time, if you watch uh, Matthew Bonner, look at his road, yeah? The his road to the Cage Warriors belt. despite fight all the best guys. He lost some, he wins some, he lost some, and look where he's end up. And that's the my mentality as well. I'm gonna work my ass off till I get the belt. And if it's not gonna be this year, it's gonna be next year, but I uh, still gonna be there. And not uh, don't think about retiring in 33 year old, you know. So I will be here training hard and try to get after them. And you know, you talk about Matthew Bonner being kind of an inspiration for you getting that title after maybe a rocky road. Is it about finding that consistency in your career right now as you feel like you're in your prime? I, I, I'm in my prime, definitely. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling really, really strong. I'm getting sharper, but the more I train, the more sharper I get. And then, and, and, yeah, all, obviously, it's not only Matthew Bonner. There's a couple guys in Cage Warriors, you know, who's like, they in and out, like same, same Mick, Mick Stanton, you know, it's like one win, one lose, one win. And then he's uh, take out the b- biggest prospect in middleweights, you know, after loss to me on a split, uh, on a decision, you know. So it's like that you can take every guy and take inspiration. And it's just, just don't give up. Just keep training. Try, try your best. They try the best. I try my best. And we'll see. I, I like Cage Warriors. It's like, it's bring the best European fighters in one promotion in Europe. And, and, and if you're good enough, you get the belt. Uh, if you even more better guy, you might get in UFC. So it's, it's, it's a good good setup and it's a good, good, good career to make, you know. And what do you make of the Cage Warriors kind of mixing with the US? You know, they have US USA events now and they have um, fighters from the US who are competing in the divisions. What do you make of that kind of uh, transformation of Cage Warriors? Yeah, hey, that's good. You can make some fun fights, you know. Is I, I think if they, if they, I hope hopefully Cage Warriors will try fly over some European fighters to America and right? do or maybe do some Americans versus European fighters. You know, that's some you can make it some big shows. You know, make it Europe versus uh, America and give me anybody in welterweight division. Why not? It's just it's all good fun. Would you like to go over to America and fight? Yeah, yeah, just pay me for flying tickets. I'll be there and fight anybody. <laughs> and I saw your Instagram story earlier saying how you're looking forward to smashing your opponent and then celebrating Christmas with your kids. You know, All last right. year, last year you fought around Christmas time. What is it like fighting around Christmas, the Christmas period, in, in terms of having a fight scheduled? And is a win the best Christmas present you can get? Yeah, it can be one of the best Christmas presents. It's my, my best Christmas present to see my uh, kids' faces on the Christmas, you know, the, the happy faces. And uh, yeah, my my all all the things what I'm doing is just about them too. You know, I got my kids and that's the main thing in my life. And, 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 and fighting is the thing what I'm enjoying and I'm enjoying being the best promotion in Europe. And then uh, fighting on Christmas. Yeah, last year on Christmas, I get my win. And this year I will do exactly the same, so. There's no doubt about it. And lastly, just before I let you go, can we just get an official prediction for you? What do you expect from your fight against Oban Elliott on December 10th? And what is your official prediction for your fight? 
Yeah, yeah, the the question what everybody has, but I, ne I never predict. Uh, obviously, my pipe. I'm not gonna predict as well this time. I know I'm gonna bring it. I know he's gonna bring it. If his dad's gonna be three round fight, it's better make sure his cardio is ready to go because mine is uh, on point, and I will be in his face for three rounds if I need to be. But uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun fight. It'll be fun fight. Well, thank you very much, and all the best for Cage Warriors 131. Thank you. Cheers, mate.